See, I've finished my first floor, and what I've done here on this blue line is this is a break line, and this indicates that more of the same is happening over to one side. Now we're going to move over and start to think about drawing some blocks, putting some furniture into this. I'm going to start with the dining room, and I'm going to put in a dining table and chairs. So I need to make myself a furniture layer. We'll call it furniture. Green's fine, 0.2 is fine. Make that current. I'm going to make a round dining table and it's going to be 1200 millimetres in diameter. The instructions for this circle say specify the centre point, well that's nice and easy, I'll put it round about here, and then it's asking for the radius or the diameter. Well if I'm going to make it 1200 um, diameter the radius is going to be 600 so I might as well just type in 600, enter and there's our table. Next we need some chairs to go with this and to do that I'm going to go to construction setup and set myself up a couple of rectangles. I'm going to go for one 500 by 500, except I forgot the at at the front. And now I'm going to offset that 50 millimeters outwards. I'll go back into my furniture layer and now I'm going to draw a polyline around that rectangle. So far that's been a straight polyline. What I can do though, if you have a look down at the command line, we've got a lot of options here. If I make the next one an arc, so type A for arc, enter, instead of making a line it makes an arc. And if I did another one it would make another arc, you can see it's sort of bouncing around there. But I've finished. Now if I click on this, I can grab hold of the grab bar at the back of this rectangle, pull it in this way till I meet my outer square, and I've got a shape that looks more or less like a chair. We'll delete the setting up lines, and now I'm going to just move that in under the table. First I'll move from the midpoint here to a quadrant point on the table. Then I'm going to do a move again, just tuck my chair in underneath the table. Next I'm going to trim off the bit of the chair that we can't see, and there it goes. So now I've got a round table with one chair. The next thing I want to do is make a lot more chairs. What we're going to do is use a command called array. What I want is to arrange this chair around the table so that I've got six chairs. If I click on that, the array options are just here. That's a rectangular array. If I go for a polar array, it will arrange my chairs around the circle. I'd already chosen the chair as the object I want to array. Now I need the center point, which is going to be the middle of my table. And can you see, as I move around, it's putting more chairs around my table. The number of items that I want is six, so I'll do six and enter. And then it's asking for the angle to fill, so I could do them lot six very close together, or I can do six further apart, or I can simply confirm that on the command line down here that it's 360 degrees I want it to fill, and now I've got my table and six chairs. It's finally asking me to confirm that that's what I want, enter. If I click on one of those chairs, you can see they all come up as a single entity, so I could choose them all at once. So that's my first group of furniture. The next furniture I'm going to make is for the bathroom, but I'm going to make my bathroom furniture over to one side because I'm going to do something a bit sort of clever with it, and I'm going to make myself a layer to go with that as well. The first thing I'm going to draw is a bath, so I'll draw a rectangle to start with, and a typical bath is 700 millimeters and 1700 long. So that's the outline of our bath. Now I'm going to offset that inwards, Set, offset it inwards 75 mil, and then we need a big space at the tap end, so I'll move that another probably 75 that way. But what you find with baths is that you get a lot of curved corners, and that's where we're going to start to use this fillet command. If I click on fillet, You'll see at the bottom that it's asking me for what I want to fill it, but then I've got an option undo polyline radius trim multiple. If I do an R for radius, then it's asking what the radius of the fillet's going to be. Well, around the outside corners of a bath, on the outside edges, you usually have a small radius of, say, 20 millimeters. So if I type 20 and enter, it's now asking for my first object. If I go click, click, you can see that it's rounded off that corner. Enter again click, click, and it gives you a little preview each time of what you're going to get. The inside of the bath tends to have much softer corners, so if I go enter again and then R for radius, I'm going to make that a 50 millimeter radius. First object, second object, and enter first object, second object. The other end of the bath is usually a lot more curved. This time I'm going to set a radius of 200. Click, 
thick. Now that looks pretty much like a bath and it's actually only two polylines. I'm going to draw a wash hand basin and a loo using the same commands and techniques, just a different bunch of radii that's going to look a little bit different. This is just so that you can see exactly what the outcome is supposed to look like. These are the rectangles we're going to start off setting up our sanitary ware with. This was for a different building but that's what our sanitary ware is going to look like by the end. So to do my loo I need a rectangle at 200 comma 500 and another rectangle at 550 comma 450 and I'll zoom in on those. I need to move this to line up with the other one, centre point to centre point, then I know I'm going to have exactly the same overlap in each corner. Back to my fillet, radius 200 is fine and now I need to change to a radius of 25 just to do my corners of my cistern. So that's my loo. Now lastly but not leastly, I need another rectangle by 50 by 450 again. These are fairly standard sizes. That's going to be my wash basin. But now what I'm going to do is fairly clever because instead of doing my filleting after I've done my offsetting, I'm going to do my fillet beforehand and show you a little bit of magic. The radius we want this time is 250. I'll click there and click there and enter, do the same again. Now if I do an offset, the distance is 40 millimeters. If I offset that, it's taken the curve with it. Now I can move this 60 mil this way, which means I've got space for my taps. And all I need to do now is fill at the two back corners and the radius is going to be 25 again. Click, click. So there we've got all of our sanitary wear. So far we've been using fairly standard drawing commands and it's all been quite simple and straightforward. The next thing we're going to do starts to make use of some of the much more flexible options that AutoCAD gives us once we've drawn something that might be quite complicated and a little bit time consuming to make use of it again. So this time we need to go to the view ribbon and we haven't used this one before. So we'll be looking at viewports in the last tutorial to go with the workbook but what we're going to be looking at here if you see this section here is called palettes and that opens you up sets of information. If I click on the tool palettes it's going to open up this thing called a tool palette. You've got lots of different alternatives built in. Um, just do be a little bit careful with some of the architectural stuff because some of these images, for instance this toilet, is a very very peculiar size relative to um, UK construction. What I'm going to do is create myself a palette all of my own. So if I point at the spine of the palette here and do a right click that's going to allow me to create a new palette. And you can see it's put it in just here after architectural annotation, construction and modeling. And I'm going to call it Verity's palette. I could call it something sensible like furniture or, and click outside that. The next thing I want to do is start to put some stuff in it. And for that, we need to go to another new ribbon. We're going to go to the insert ribbon. And you can see we've got some stuff about blocks, we've got some stuff about creating blocks, references, point clouds. We won't worry about any of this lot. This is related to linking to other people's drawings. What we're going to do is just have a look at blocks for the moment. And the first block that I'm going to make is my dining room table and six chairs. If I highlight that and then click on create block up here, up comes the dialog box and I'm going to call my block 1200 diameter dining table. I'm going to pick a point for my base point which will be the middle there. The objects I've already selected, I've got it set to convert those objects to a block and I definitely don't want it annotative. I do want to let it be exploded though because I might need to at some point. So if I OK that, it doesn't look as though anything very much has changed but if I hover over this table you can see that it's now a single entity. And if I want to put this table and chairs into my tool palette all I need to do is click on it, hover my cursor over it but not on the blue dot. Kind of grab hold of it and you can see it's got a shadow following it bring it into here and drop it down there, except I haven't saved the drawing. So I just need to do a quick save. Now I should be able to drag the table into my tool palette and there I've got it and I can use it any time I want to. I'm going to do the same with my bath. Create block, call it standard bath. My pick point is going to be the middle of the back. Okay that, so I might as well do my loo point. This is the point that it attaches to, finally, my wash hand basin. And I'm going, just going to call it WHB for wash hand basin. 
base point will be the midpoint there. If I do a quick save up here, now I should be able to drag all of these blocks into my personalised tool palette. And because of the way AutoCAD personalises things, the next drawing I open on this computer, I will have this already in my palette. So I can just reuse them again, I don't need to redo them. But I've clicked on it in the palette, and now it's grabbed hold of one, and I can put it on that wall somewhere. Click on my basin, I'll stick it in the middle. Click on my bath, I'm just going to dump that there, because I'm going to need to rotate it. If I click on that, back to the home panel, rotate, make that midpoint my rotate point, just swivel around until I've got it at the angle I want, click, easy as pie. Now, I don't know about you, but I think this door is not very comfortable relative to the location of this bath, so I'm going to move it up, and I'm going to do that with the stretch command, so I'll do my crossing window, but I don't want to stretch the bath. So if I remove that from my selection by doing an R for remove, enter, click on the bath, enter, and now I'm going to move the door that way and I'll send it 250mm that way. So now we've got a nice bathroom arrangement and it starts to get very easy to make and reuse things. The last thing I want to show you about the tool palette is what you can do to save it. This will save on this computer and any time I enter a drawing on this computer it'll come up with my palette now. If I want to be able to export this to somewhere else, so if I'm going to work on a different computer, maybe at work, or if you're on one of the design studio computers um, in university, because it won't remember you, if you, if you log on again, you need to be able to put this somewhere that you'll be able to find it. So if I do a right click on the back of this palette and go to customize palettes here, that it gives me a dialog box. There's Verity's palette. If I do a right click on that again and export it, I can save it to somewhere else. So if I put, go into my drawing file and um, for 1213, because that's this year, I can save that there, and then I'd be able to use it in a different drawing. If I save it to a flash drive, I can take it to university and use it there. I could take it to work and use it there. I could bring it from work to home and use it wherever I want to. To get your palette back in again, if I now do a right click and go to import, it's gone back to the file I thought of last time, and there it is, there's my palette. So if I open that, it's back in there and here it is actually in the drawing. So that's how we can create blocks, put the blocks into a tool palette and export and import the tool palette from one computer to another, all of which is really useful stuff. I hope this has been a useful session. In the next one, we're going to be looking at layouts. Goodbye.